Remember this, be kind to your mind. Welcome to Healthy Mindset Miracles. I'm Tanisha, and this is episode one, Ownership Free, where a healthy mindset begins. Before we get started, it is important to be aware of potential triggers that might arise during this discussion. I am not a licensed mental health professional or a certified therapist. I am simply a person that is passionate about sharing stories of personal victories and positive experiences in life. This podcast features real-life stories and people's journey to miraculous victories. While we aim to inspire and educate, information provided is not to replace professional advice or treatment. If you or someone you know is in need of mental health support, we strongly encourage seeking qualified mental health professionals. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to hear more, then like, share, comment, and subscribe so that you'll never miss an inspiring upcoming episode with special guest stories and more. You can also join us on our private Facebook page. Just search Healthy Mindset Miracles and request to join. Now let's explore the concept of not taking ownership of mental health conditions or anything that we don't want in our lives, such as illnesses. Think about it. Every time we utter the word, my, we're declaring ownership. My children, my car, my house, my dog. It's clear that we possess these things. We want them in our lives. They are ours. But what about when we say my anxiety or my depression or my heart disease or my diabetes? The revelation is striking. We're claiming ownership of these mental conditions and physical conditions. I don't know about you, but here's the kicker. Do you truly want to own them? Do you want to carry the burden of anxiety or depression or an illness in your life? Do you want those things? Because I don't. The answer is likely no. Most of us don't want to own these conditions. We don't want them in our life. We want to shed them. We want to release them and live a life free from their grasp. And that's exactly what we're here to explore. Now, I know you guys are saying, well, I can't help that I've gotten ill. Well, in a way you can. Because you can change the way you eat. You can change the things that you say about yourself. You can actually change your mindset. For instance, here are four tips to help you manage mental health. And it also can help you manage your physical health. One of the things it talks about is make a plan for each day. Keep your brain and body functioning by refueling it with nutrition. Okay, for me, I took sugar out of my diet. Sugar is inflammatory. It causes a lot of problems. It is the hardest thing to do because let me tell you, I love ice cream. I love cookies. I love cakes. I love it all. Now, did I take it completely out of my life the first two, three months? Yes, I did because I needed to control my needs and desires. I needed to control those things. And I was constantly needing and wanting and desiring ice cream or cookies or whatever. I was constantly wanting it all the time. So what I did was I changed my diet. I took all of those things out. I then replaced them with sugar-free candy if I needed or wanted a taste of candy. Or instead of eating candy, I would use cream cheese. I would take cream cheese and put that on maybe a celery or something, just so that I could have the taste of something semi-sweet because cream cheese has a little bit of a sweetness to it. I just gave myself some different changes in my diet. Instead of eating fried foods and things that were negative for me, I started eating meats, good meats, good meats from a farm, not from the store. (laughs) We'll get into that subject later on in another podcast, but I started to get good meats. I started to be more conscious about the things that I was eating just by doing that, just by changing my foods, my body got healthier. My mind got healthier. It is incredible 
what happens when you take inflammatory foods out of your diet and you give your body what it needs and what it wants. Well, your body needs food to survive, of course. I said I did that for three months, right? Well, I still do that, but I have cheat days. I have days where once a month I'll go get ice cream, a small thing of ice cream. And let me tell you, when you first do that, the next day is not very pleasant because your body is not used to having that sugar anymore. However, I don't mind those cheat days. I do them on days where I know the next day I don't have to go to work and I don't have any obligations and I can probably sleep in a little. (laughs) You got to be smart when you do those things. Let your feelings be known. In order to maintain mental health, you may need to release uncomfortable emotions. Proactively manage your stress. You can avoid being overwhelmed if you're prepared and planned your time. I went to a naturopathic doctor a while back, a couple years ago, and she had prescribed me this vitamin that really helped me. It was an all-natural vitamin that did not give me any effects of sleepiness or any challenges. But if I was going to go do something like get on a plane or go somewhere that I knew that it was going to be a stressful event, I took one. I took one of those vitamins and it literally kept me calm during the moments of a stressful time. And I was so thankful for that. Now I don't take them as much unless I absolutely have to because I don't need them because I've learned to control those moments where I could be in a stressful event or something to that effect. Positive attitude towards others. The desire to connect with others is hardwired within ourselves. And we really, we're social beings. I I can hear people say, I don't like people. I'm not social. Well, you say that, but reality is that we are social beings. All of us want a best friend. All of us want somebody we can talk to. All of us are social beings. We may not want a whole crowd of people, which I don't, but we do at least want one person. So we have to be positive towards that person. You marry somebody, be positive towards them. Most importantly, though, be positive to yourself. Self-positive talk is so imperative. Telling yourself, I get better every single day. Let's go for a walk. Tell yourself to go for a walk. Every day is a fresh start. I can do anything. I have a little booklet of affirmations that I tell myself every day. Sometimes I have to tell myself that I'm strong that I am adequate, that I'm smart. There's days where I look at myself in a mirror and I'm like, oh gosh, you're getting old. No, 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 no. I need to change that. You're not getting old. You're aging gracefully. You're beautiful still. You can do anything you put your mind to. Like literally that's what I have to do. I'm aware that there are challenging days and they will be inevitable and they will come And with those negative emotions, they may try to creep in because believe me, I still have those moments. What's truly remarkable, however, is that I've acquired skills to swiftly talk myself out of those moments. Sometimes I find it necessary to vocalize my determinations, like saying, not today, depression, you're not welcome here. I then take action. I get out of my bed. I change my surroundings or take a brief walk. Sometimes Simply just getting out of my bed and making my bed. I don't know what it is about a made bed, but it changes your mood. It really, really does. It's crazy. But there's days where I'm just too tired and I don't want to make that bed. And I'll just get up and go for a walk or do something to just redirect my mind. Even if it's just circles in my yard, I engage in these activities to redirect my thoughts and focus on something else. There are instances when I start to feel down while at work or driving, and during those times, I must intensely concentrate on steering my thoughts into a more positive direction. Because if I don't, my subconscious mind will take control. So I have to take control of that. You see, the beauty lies in learning how to talk ourselves out of negative thoughts and replace them with positive thoughts. Our mind cannot think of two thoughts at the same time. So why not change the way that you think? If you don't remember anything else that you hear today, then at least remember this. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. 
they become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. Embrace your destiny with positivity because it is your future. I have heard this so many times in my life. And it wasn't until I really paid attention to the words and actively started watching my thoughts so that I can create my future. Those thoughts that you have is what shapes your next moments of life. So daily mindfulness, eat your meals without any distraction, sit in the sunshine and be conscious of how it feels. Journal in the evenings to evaluate your day. Walk barefoot and feel your feet on the ground. Listen to music and fully immerse yourself in the sound and practice mindful breathing once a day. <laughs> Listen, the other morning I was in my car and I was feeling a little like, oh, I gotta go to work again. But I knew I did not want that attitude. I did not want to start my day like that. I did not want to think that way. So I turned on the radio. I heard a song that I hadn't heard in a long time. And the vibe just hit me and I just started dancing. Now, it's really hard to dance while you're driving and not speed. Thankfully, I was being very careful. But let me tell you, when I hit that red light, I think everybody around me saw that I was having an amazing day because I was dancing in my seat at the red light. And it was fun. I did not care who was looking at me. I didn't care what they thought that I was doing. In fact, I wish they were doing the same because they were probably going to have an amazing day like I ended up having that day because I started it out by doing something that got me going, that gave me the vibe. So it's just important that we do these things. All right. Ownership language can impact our self-identity and explore alternative empowering ways to express our experiences and ultimately our existence. When we start becoming mindful of our thoughts and our words, it becomes a chain reaction and it'll either make or break our day. So making and breaking our day has everything to do with our thoughts and our words and what we do. Some cases, people are told that the idea that taking ownership is necessary for healing. I say in my own personal experience that taking ownership of my words can be a step towards healing. It's so making sure to do things daily to find center peace is where you can start to grow strong. Seeking out and getting around positive thinkers and speakers helps a lot. For three years, I was part of a mentorship group that helped me discover books, programs, and really changed my life. <laughs> I listen to podcasts and choose to really get involved with investing in myself. I listen to things such as How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. That book was a life changer for me. Another one was called Being Happy by Andrew Matthews. If you start reading books or listening to podcasts or things that are positive, you tend to direct yourself into that positive direction. The links to these books will be in the podcast down below or in the YouTube channel down below. I am not affiliated to these companies, these books, or anybody. I do have an affiliation with Amazon, so I will put my affiliate a link in there from Amazon. They do pay me just a little percentage for sharing that link. However, I do it not for that percentage. I do it because I want you guys to have the right book. Sometimes people go looking for it and they may get the wrong one. I'm giving you the one that I know that I personally use. So that's why I'm sharing that with you. Here's the thing about reading books. It sharpens your brain. It expands your vocabulary. It prevents memory loss, improved concentration, Reading is contagious. It's very contagious. I, I went on a cruise with my husband on our honeymoon, and we went at the top deck, and literally everybody was sitting in lounge chairs reading. They were reading from a, a little device. It's called a Kindle Paperwhite. I didn't even know what that thing was. 
at the time, I had my tablet with me and a book with me and it was so bright. It was hard to even see the pages and it definitely couldn't see my tablet. And I was like, obviously none of these people are having problems reading. So I had asked one of the ladies what it was she had in her hand. She told me and I had to go get one. I have one and I love it. I love the Kindle Paperwhite. It's my favorite thing. So reading also increases empathy, builds a critical mind, and it's, it helps you with better writing skills. And, and for me, it, it really did. Like spelling was my worst thing ever. I still struggle with spelling even as an adult. But the more I read, the better I get at it. So I truly agree that it helps with your writing skills for sure. Now, you will hear in this podcast the same stories from those that found healing with our guest speakers. They invested in themselves to really grow and change for the better. So they read books, they listen to things. They may have reached out to get counseling, started praying or seeked out spiritual help. Some looked deep inside to find the root of the challenge and really worked on solutions. So I recorded an episode with Naomi. And if you guys ever get an opportunity to hear another episode, please do. She was pretty incredible. Naomi and I were talking about looking deep inside of yourself and finding the root challenges and working towards the solution of those challenges. So go and listen to that podcast because it was so amazing to have that conversation with her. So a little reminder, do not compare yourself with others. You are good enough. When I was deep into depression, I used to compare myself to so many other people, my looks, what I had, my marriage, being a mom, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and all of that tends to make you see something that really isn't any different than who you really are. It's just people are putting stuff out there and sharing what they do, but that doesn't mean that you're any more less adequate or less of a person because somebody else is doing something or has more than what you have. So I used to just sit in front of the TV and lay on the couch and not move for hours. I actually sought out positive TV shows because if I watched something negative, then I knew I would just keep my mood in the negative slots. So I couldn't watch anything with drama or sad stuff in it because then I would I'd be sad. There was one time I watched um, a movie and I was so angry after I watched it that it literally had changed my mood for the entire day. I was like mad at everybody. And it was nobody in my house's fault but me watching a TV show. So during a period of deep depression, my coping mechanism involved extended hours in front of the TV, often spent motionless on the couch. So I actively did sought out the positive TV shows. I recognized that negative content would only perpetrate my low mood. So I avoided anything with negativity and I concentrated solely on shows that radiated positivity and happiness, such as HGTV remodeling, or occasionally I watched religious channels. Despite not being particularly religious myself, at times I did turn to the Bible and pray, especially during moments of intense emotional distress. Remarkably, those endeavors, though unrelated to my personal beliefs, began to have a positive impact on my overall emotional state. So there were incidences when I became recluse. I just didn't want to talk to anybody. So there did come a time where I did yearn for a safe place where I could open up about my feelings and experiences. Although I often felt ashamed of my situation, particularly concerning my marriage, because I was going through a really tough time in my marriage. At this time, I was in a very toxic relationship in my marriage not the current marriage that I'm in now. I did get a divorce from that being. However, during those times that I was in that past marriage, it was, it was a lot. I was dealing with a lot. I was dealing with a lot of shame, a lot of depression, anger, resentment, feeling like I had no self-esteem, no self-worth. It was rough. And I wanted to share my personal life with others, and I was hesitant to do so. And I understood that the necessity of speaking with somebody that wouldn't judge me was important, but 
again, how do you tell somebody of these bad things that were happening without somebody judging you? Because I can't say that I was perfect. I wasn't. There were things that I was doing that was not the best decisions ever. I regret a lot of choices that I made. But I did scour local areas and looked for resources and programs that would allow me to connect with other people who could relate to my story. However, the only thing that was available were churches and professional counselings being the primary options, both of which I was reluctant to pursue. Consequently, though, I did go a path unexpectedly and found a women's Bible study in church. And instead of attending church itself, I went to these Bible studies. I figured it was just because I needed a friend, somebody who wasn't close to my family or somebody who didn't know my husband, didn't know what was going on in my life, but where I could just relax and have somebody to talk to. And if I talked about things in my personal life in those moments, I was in a safe place or that's what I felt. Although this is not exactly what I wanted, it was the only thing available. And it did start for me seeking a journey of other opportunities within the community. And from there, I did end up finding mentorship program. And the mentorship program is where I was able to be directed and around people that were positive. So positive mindset people, they were reading books, they were doing things that I wasn't doing. And they were guiding me to what to read, what to do, and and held me accountable to it. That really helped a lot. Just by taking one step to make a change can lead you to many others. Eventually, you will find purpose and nothing but positive will come into your life as long as you start strong in your thinking and your words. You really need to seek that stuff out. So if you're thinking, I need to change, I need to find somebody to talk to, start looking for positives in that. Start looking for those positive people to get around. I would like to wrap this up by encouraging you all to do the next best thing. So go read a book, watch a positive TV show, get up and take a shower, and dress up for no reason at all but to feel better Go for a walk or find something in your community to do. Whatever it is that you choose, do it with an open mind that you're looking for positivity in your life. Get around people that have positivity in their life. Even if it's not a perfect group, at least find something to do to get your mind off of what it is that you're going through. You can be surprised about how things will start changing. There's a book called Love and Respect, and it talked about the crazy cycle. And this book, I really wish I had read it during the time that I was dealing with the emotions that I was dealing with that past marriage. Now, I can't say whether or not this book would have saved my marriage because this book definitely takes two to read it. But I do know this. I was able to find my value. I was able to find my worth. And I was able to get out of that crazy cycle on my own. Because once that relationship ended and I was in a new relationship, I did not want to bring that crazy cycle mindset that I had into my new situation. And changing that really changes the direction of where you're headed in your life. Share with us in the comments about how you found this podcast to be helpful for you. We would love to hear your stories. You can go on our Facebook and share stories there. It is a private Facebook group. We have to accept you in. And if you have any questions, go ahead and submit those questions to us. I will dedicate five minutes to each of our upcoming podcasts in answering those questions or sharing your positive stories. So if you want to share a positive story of how the podcast has helped you or ask a question, I will dedicate those five minutes in the podcast to be able to share that information uh, live. So until we meet again, may you encounter the wonders of healthy mindset in your life and believe in miracles.
Thank you for listening.